In this section of the course, we'll be going over some of the best practices for unit testing and test-driven development, learn about types of code coverage, and implementing code coverage with pytest-cov, and we'll work through some hands-on examples. In this lecture, we'll go over some best practices of unit testing and test-driven development. First, you should always do the next simplest test case. This allows you to gradually increase the complexity of the code, refactoring as you go. This helps keep your code clean and understandable. If you jump to the complex cases too quickly, you can find yourself stuck writing a lot of code for one test case, which breaks the short feedback cycle we look for with TDD. Beyond just slowing you down, this can also lead to bad design as you can miss some simple implementations that come from the incremental approach. Always use descriptive test names. The code is read thousands of times more than it's written as the years go by. Making the code clear and understandable should be the top priority. Unit tests are the best documentation for the developers that come after you for how you intended your code to work. If they can't understand what the unit test is testing, that documentation value is lost. Test suites should name the class or function that is under test, and the test name should describe the functionality that is being tested. Keep your unit tests building and running fast. One of the biggest benefits of TDD is the fast feedback on how your changes have affected things. You lose this if the build and or execution of your unit test is taking a long time, i.e. more than a few seconds. To help your test stay fast, try to keep console output to a minimum or eliminate it altogether. This output just slows down the test and clutters up the test results. Mock out any slow collaborators that are being used with test doubles that are fast, such as network connections and databases. Use code coverage analysis tools. Once you've implemented all your test cases, go back and run your unit tests through a code coverage tool. It can be surprising some of the areas of your code you'll miss, especially negative test cases. You should have a goal of 100% code coverage on functions with real logic. Don't waste your time on one-line getter and setter functions. PyTest.cov is easy to install with pip install pytest-cov, and it can generate an easy-to-use HTML output. Make sure you run your unit tests multiple times and in a random order. Running your tests many times will help ensure that you don't have any flaky tests that are failing intermittently. Running your tests in random order ensures that your tests don't have dependencies between each other. You can use the pytest-random-order plugin to randomize the execution of the tests and pytest-repeat for repeating all or a subset of the unit tests as needed. Using a static code analysis tool regularly on your code base is another core requirement for ensuring code quality. PyLint is an excellent open source static analysis tool for Python that can be used for detecting bugs in your code. It can also verify the code is formatted to the team's standards, and it can even generate UML diagrams based on its analysis.